Good day grade 11s, welcome to your final lesson on intermolecular forces. In this lesson we're going to be looking at the chemistry of water. So basically what we're going to do is look at everything we've learned about water and put it together with the water molecules and put it together and talk more about what we know and understand about water. So first of all let's talk about the shape of the water molecule. As you can see here we have got a hydrogen over here and we've got a hydrogen over here which we know about and we've spoken about it, it looks like Mickey Mouse ears and this here is a shared pair of electrons and that is a shared pair of electrons and you can see here which is very important is we've got two unpaired unshared pairs of electrons two unshared pairs of electrons so the water molecule has two lone pairs of electrons and what's special about these is that these repel the bonding pairs so what happens is is that these will repel the bonding pairs which is why we end up with this little Mickey Mouse type shape okay and what happens is that means that this angle between the bonding pairs okay is decreased to 104.5 degrees now I'm sorry that the drawing says 104 it's 104.5 degrees and guys you need to learn that angle that is one of the few angles you do need to learn and if they ask well, why is this because the lone pairs are repelling the shared pairs of electrons okay next the water molecule is therefore considered to be angular remember in the previous video they once said that it was v-shaped we don't use v-shapes in our curriculum we use angular so it's angular and it is a dipole because if you look carefully yeah you can see that this side here okay let me have a look at this if I can find my mouse there it is this side is the oxygen molecule okay and this has got more electrons so it's going to be slightly negative and this side this is the hydrogen and this is the hydrogen so if you look from this side you see this slightly positive and this is slightly positive and therefore it is considered to be a dipole molecule it's got two poles one slightly negative and the other side slightly positive right so that's the shape of the water molecule now water's unique properties are due to the hydrogen bonding now remember we spoke about hydrogen bonding in the previous lesson and that is what makes the difference in when it's when it becomes a solid a liquid or gas so, okay let's start with the gas molecules yeah the gas molecules you can see the little water um, vapor or steam and you can see that they are moving very fast and they are moving very far away so therefore there's not much interaction between them so we don't have to worry too much but as the temperature decreases the water molecules start moving closer and closer together and if you look carefully here you can see that this is a little hydrogen and that's an oxygen and they start to form these hydrogen bonds okay there's an oxygen and there's a hydrogen they start to form this so basically starts giving it that shape okay that it's going to form eventually and then finally your solid water and here it forms a proper crystalline structure where these dotted lines all represent hydrogen bonds which occur between the hydrogen atom which is slightly positive and the oxygen which is slightly negative and remember this is an intermolecular force but these hydrogen bonds are pretty strong and you'll notice therefore and we'll speak about it some more in this video that there's a lot more space is taken up by the same number of molecules than water molecules I mean liquid molecules liquid water molecules so that was when it's solid it takes up more space than when it's liquid okay because of this structure and if you look carefully you can see that that's actually 3d they're trying to show that that's 3d okay so what does that mean to us well first of all let's get an idea of the size 18 grams of water contains one mole of water molecules in other words if we have a container okay terrible drawing of a container and we have 18 grams of water that means that we've got one mole of water molecules which means we've got 6.02 times by 10 to 23 water molecules again so in other words I know this you know about Avogadro's constant but let's just give you an idea again that's 6 
water molecules in 18 grams. Sure, okay, so the water molecules are pretty damn small. Okay, right, now, therefore, one liter of water contains 55.5 moles. So think that number there times 55.5. Okay, so therefore, it contains one liter of water, which is the equivalent, okay, think one liter of water. If you can't think of one liter of water, think, um, you know, you've got 500 ml Coke, then double it, that's a liter of water. 3.34 times by 10 to 25 water molecules. That is a lot of water molecules, okay. Right, because the hydrogen bonds between water molecules, a great deal of energy is required to break the bonds and get the temperature to rise. And energy is also released when the water is cooled. And thus, the sea acts as a heat reservoir and allows the earth to have a moderate climate because what they're saying is that basically it takes quite a lot of energy to heat the ocean up and quite a lot of energy to cool it down. So what happens is when you have the sea and the ocean next to the land, the land is going to heat up quickly okay but it's also going to cool down quickly whereas the ocean is going to heat up slowly but it's then also going to cool down slowly and you guys know this if you've ever been swimming anywhere in a swimming pool or a dam or lake first hot day of summer you dive into that pool and it's freezing okay why because the water hasn't had a chance to heat up yet okay but give it three or four days and then that water will be nice and warm and it'll stay warm even if the weather tends to go a bit horrible again afterwards for a few days. So what that means is the sea acts as a heat reservoir and that means that it allows the earth to have a moderate climate. If it wasn't for the sea, we just have extreme colds and extreme hots because that's what the land does. Okay, so that is one of the beneficial uses of water to our human population and also the earth Okay, and animals. Right, so the boiling point of water. We've already spoken about the boiling point of water when we spoke about hydrogen bonds. But if you look here, do you see here, and this is in Kelvin, okay, but the boiling point of water is very high compared to hydrogen sulfide, hydrogen selenium, hydrogen tellurium, I can never say that word, and hydrogen polonium, okay? And it's even higher than your methane and all these others and the reason is because of the hydrogen bonding so why is that important it's important because that means that it's going to take quite a lot of energy to break the water molecules up to make them become steam okay and that is because of the hydrogen bonding now final thing we need to talk about is density of water and ice density is the mass per unit volume Okay, and do you remember I told you about and I showed you how the, in ice the water molecules are much further apart than in liquid uh, water because they form that latter structure. So as the water freezes from 4 degrees to 0, it gives off heat and it, it expands. Okay, so here's just a little cute video which gives you a kind of an idea of how water freezes. Okay, well, I hope that the video that you saw now explained to you how water freezes. And I'm actually going to switch the volume down so you can't hear it and replay it because I want to talk to you about some of the things that we're seeing there. So, first of all, we have the water molecule, okay? When it is liquid, the water molecules are moving very fast apart and they have very temporary hydrogen bonds, okay? So the water molecules are moving around. These little dotted lines are the hydrogen bonds that are forming, but they're very temporary. As the water gets colder and colder, they start bonding with the nearby molecules, okay? And then as they turn to ice, okay, you'll find, look, that that's a beautiful crystalline structure that's being formed there. But please note that, as you should know, 
particles never stop vibrating, okay? And even ice molecules or solid molecules, any molecules that are solid are still vibrating, okay? It's just they're vibrating at such a rate that we cannot see it. And obviously they're so small we can't see them, okay? So the lower density explains why ice floats on water, okay? That makes sense, right? So what you need to know is that water freezes from the top down and this forms an insulating layer and it prevents the water below from freezing so it preserves aquatic life so if you look over here on this side you can see a guy with a camera that there that whitey blue stuff there that's ice so he's actually scuba diving under the ice and this beautiful thing over here is actually a jellyfish okay and yeah you can see a bird that's been fishing in an ice hole and it's caught some fish okay there's not we're not dead fish they will be dead soon but <laughs> then this bird is actually fishing through the ice hole so you guys should know by now that basically the important thing about water other than the fact that we need to drink it to survive is that two things one is that they often tend to ask you questions like why is water good for the earth why do we need the water and they don't mean we can drink it to survive they mean the fact that one because of its slow increase in temperature and so decrease in temperature it gives us a moderate climate and secondly because the water freezes from the top down it forms an insulating layer which means it preserves aquatic life under the ice which in then turn helps us people up here also survive okay and that is basically all you need to know about the chemistry of water have a great day